Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. Hope everybody made it through the storm okay. The city of Providence's streets could not be plowed worse. Uh, <laughs> the idea of curb to curb, you can barely get a car down North Main Street because the plowing was so bad on both sides of the street. Uh, let's jump over to some other news hitting Rhode Island. The number of doses of the Pfizer vaccine that Rhode Island was supposed to receive for next week's uh, vaccinations has been reduced by about 35, 40 percent. Uh, there's a fight between the governor's office, Pfizer, the White House, other states were hit as well. Uh, it is completely unclear as to what the issue is, whether it's a lack of communication or production problems or transportation logistics problems. We're on top of it. You can see that story on Go Local. Let's go to Balzano, Italy. There's nothing dull in Balzano, Italy. Rebecca Cotto da Silva joins us from Balzano in quarantine. Uh, Rebecca, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, as always, for having me. You tested positive uh, on the heels of your daughter, Olympia, testing positive about two weeks ago. What's the situation now? Where, how is life, and when do you uh, hopefully uh, get out of quarantine? So um, she tested, so we've actually been tested a third time now, fourth time overall, if you count our volunteer weekend testing and the 21st of November. And uh, on Wednesday, we tested again, and her test result was dubio, which means doubt. Um, and that basically means that they found us, you know, like a single protein or whatever. And so you can't call someone positive with that finding, but they're not ready to call it negative either. I tested positive a second time in a row, which was not a surprise because I still felt pretty bad on Wednesday. And um, yeah, so we've been in this house since December 2nd. And what are we at now? I don't know. 18th. Okay. <laughs> and yeah, that's how it is. And, uh, you know, things in Italy are, because the quarantine is so strict, because it's a crime for us to leave the house, it would be along the lines of attempted murder um, for me to go out now that I've had the positive test. Um, you know, we get our groceries delivered and it's, you know, just t send a text message to the owner of the grocery store and they bring it over. And then you actually, the rule is to settle later, right? Because they don't even want to touch your, if they can't bring a sort of touchless way to take your payment, then um, you settle it after. So we've been able, I've had friends bring me some stuff that you can't find here in town. Um, the grocery store here will deliver. If I needed something from the pharmacy, it would deliver. So it's it's been great. Even the hardware store would deliver if I needed a light bulb. Um, <laughs> you know, so it's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's you know, in Italy, you don't necessarily have everything in one place. It's funny, like pharmacies, I think, especially abroad are very different than in the U.S. Uh, they're, you know, you can't just go to a big store and, and pick up a antihistamine. You have to go to a pharmacy and a pharmacy won't be located in a big store like a Walmart type of store. Uh, how do you feel? I actually, I felt pretty bad the day of the third test, the third round of testing. And now I feel pretty much more or less normal. I think if I were to test today, I'd probably come out dubio. Um, but obviously it could still be positive. But the nice thing is, is that they are going to release Olympia from quarantine because she's does not have symptoms. And she went from, it was positive, positive, dubio. And so they said, look, 20 days, 21 days after she tested positive, um, you know, the fact that it wasn't still a strong positive and the fact that her symptoms are following uh, the tests means that if she's asymptomatic, so she'll get a letter on Monday morning, you're out of quarantine. And then she has to go to her family doctor and get a certificate that says um, you don't have symptoms. And then she gets to go back to school. So she'll be back in school on Monday midday or Tuesday morning, hopefully. Well, that's, that's at least a relief. Um, how many more days potentially are you still in quarantine? 
So they were, you know, I'm really appreciative of how they're doing this because the story is is very much that it's so tough and it's so harsh and, and it definitely is and I don't want to take that away from them but uh, they're trying to get me out by the 24th 25th right so at least I can take a walk um, you know as soon as possible so they're going to test me on the 22nd they've extended my quarantine to the 24th and um if I were to test dubio on the 22nd, then my quarantine would be extended through 21 days after I first had symptoms. Um, so I guess uh, maybe a week after Olympia, so another Sunday from now or another Sunday from Sunday. So um, it's I think it's been, yeah, it's a reasonable like mix of clinical and um, – you know, how are you feeling as, you know, if your viral load has gone down so low that we almost didn't detect it, you know, in another five days, if you're not having any symptoms, then yes, you're okay to go back. And I, I thought that was very reasonable. So functionally, between Olympia's testing positive and yours, it's three weeks to four weeks of total time in which your household's been in some level of quarantine. Yeah, it'll be, <laughs> if I go through the 24th, it'll be three weeks plus, right? Yeah. And then if I have to go until, let's say, Sunday or Tuesday after that, 29th, it would be four weeks. So, yeah. Tough, um, tough we, times. Yeah, we actually, um, so the doctor's office is up a pretty steep hill from us, and we were released from quarantine to go get the first round of tests because all of the school kids were getting them. So they told us to go there instead of having the at-home service come. And it felt so nice to get out walking, and I'm just hoping that I still have, like, the leg muscles to do that <laughs> in another two weeks. <laughs> um, uh, what's been the best part of it, and what's been the worst part of it? Um, you know, it's nice to know that you have things guaranteed, right? So I've got these, you know, I can text the grocery store and I'll get my groceries. And that's just amazing. Um, the worst part of it is, you know, I've got, uh, I want to keep the magic of Christmas alive and I can't actually leave the house before Christmas. So I have to, you know call someone and inconvenience them to play the role of um, Babo Natale, as it is said here. And, um, and that's, you know, that's, I don't like inconveniencing someone that way. I actually would prefer to pay for my groceries when I get them. It's really nice to not have to, but I don't like accumulating debt in that way. But I mean, that's like, you can't complain about that, right? <laughs> right. right. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I think the sort of fact that a lot of people who maybe minimize the virus or, you know, say things that it's not real or it's not as bad, um, all of a sudden have disappeared and are like, no, why don't you test negative? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, like, you know, there's a there's a system with which you can get a ride. So you both wear FFP2 masks and then the person to go to a testing center would be behind the passenger seat with a single driver. And I've had people who have completely minimized the virus and said it doesn't exist at first or it's not so bad, be like, no, no, I'm not going to give you a ride. I was like, I thought you, <laughs> of all people, would be willing to. Right, right. I and, you know, every, <laughs> yeah, everyone else in my life is either in here that I know is a uh, literally a school teacher, an officer, a police officer, or a nurse, or married to one. And so it's like, I'm not, uh, even though it's very safe to go down in the car with FFP2 masks, I don't think it would be fair to ask someone who would then have contact with a nurse, you know, right. uh, in the off chance. And so, but the nice thing is that the health service comes to me for that. Right. So, right. you know, that's, uh, I, I'm, really, really impressed with how reasonable they are in terms of, okay, it's been 20 days since you first had symptoms. You had symptoms and they let up. And, you know, so that's a uh, 21 days is reasonable because you hear of people being in quarantine for weeks and weeks and weeks. Like um, in March, for example, I know two people who are doctors 
And so one doctor got it, the other doctor got it, then child number one got it, then child number two got it, and they were inside for two months, the whole family. And that's Uh, just, yeah, go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, I was going to ask how uh, the numbers in Italy are still tough. Um, Cases have come down since the lockdown. Uh, Has Restrictions have uh, been lessened to some degree, but deaths continue to be a problem. Uh, what's the, the sense in Italy as to what direction the country is going in? Well, everything's going to be shut down hard and soon, um, and even sooner than anticipated. So there was this kind of understanding that things would be shut down, uh, basically Zona Rossa, red zone for Italy, from, um, let's say, the 21st, or... Uh, Basically, the 6th of January was, is it, it's not Boxing Day. I don't know, Three Kings Day, something like that. But um, holidays here are basically 23rd of December to 6th of January. And there is an understanding that from the 21st of December to the 6th of January, there would be a certain level of restrictions increasing a lot on the 24th, 25th, 26th, um, and 31st, and 6th, 5th, 6th, um, but everything from the 21st to the 6th higher than it is normally, and then even more on those holiday days. And I believe that even, you know, even people, uh, there it's called Lega Nord here. It's the party that's been very much against restrictions. They're asking for restrictions now. And even in um, Veneto where you find Venice and Verona, the president, I think it's president that basically would be a governor there said, okay, after two o'clock you have to be home like Mm. if you're out you need to be it needs to be motivated it needs to be certified that you're out for a real reason medical work um by 2 p.m every day starting i think tomorrow which was a real surprise to everyone so people are fleeing to their vacation homes and then the provinces with the vacation homes are saying no you can't come to your second home Like if your family doc, everyone, it's because we have this nationalized healthcare system, it's kind of like an HMO where everyone has this family doctor. It's a free choice who you're with, but that's your person until you go through some bureaucratic steps to change it. So uh, if you're enrolled where your primary house is, that's where your family doctor is and you get to choose among doctors in that area. So like, for example, a lot of people have a second home here. And back in March here, we said, no, no, don't come. If your family doctor isn't here, you don't get to be in your second home. And so, yeah, now it's the south more than the north where people want to come because the ski lifts are closed. So people in the south are starting to be like, no, no, we don't want this huge flood of everybody. But um, I've been hearing from people that live in, you know, Venice and those areas that the, the streets are dark now homes are shuttered because it seems like people are trying to get out before they're not allowed to. The restrictions that have been in the paper are incredible. They're going to be putting um, uh, basically checkpoints on the freeway, on the highways, to make sure that you're observing distancing rules in the car. So a whole family could be in a car, but two people who don't live together, they will check and they will make sure that you're wearing this certain type of mask and sitting where you need to sit no more than one person per row and then staggered in terms of left or right. So that, I mean, that's really intense. They're putting thousands of people out in train stations and airports to make sure that you have a motivated reason to get where you're going to be. Um, they're really, really cracking down and we find out the official, I think the official rules going to affect tomorrow. We might find them out tonight or by now, but I just checked before uh, this call and they weren't totally solidified yet. Uh, Rebecca, thanks so much for the update. Sorry you've got to be in quarantine. Glad Olympia is getting out of quarantine. And uh, hopefully we can touch base next week and get an update on all the restrictions that are now hitting Italy. Uh, as, as we've talked about in the past, Rhode Island is not in a good place. It has, uh, we've fallen to second in the country uh, for a number of new cases per 100,000, but uh, leading the country. and and the deaths are just piling up here, sadly. Um, I appreciate you taking the time and joining us. It's in, incredibly helpful to hear. We were on the phone the other day uh, on, a, on a conference call with uh, 
one of the top marketing people in banking, and she said, oh, I watch Rebecca. My family's from Balzano. Uh, I love hearing what's going on there. Uh, so uh, really appreciate you taking the time. For everybody else, it is a busy afternoon on a Friday. Governor Raimondo, who is out of a seven-day quarantine after being exposed to uh, the Director of Health, uh, Nicole Alexander-Scott, who has tested positive. The governor will be hosting her weekly uh, press briefing at one o'clock. Dr. Michael Fine, the former Director of Health, will join us in studio, uh, excuse me, via Skype at 1.30. Both those events you can watch on Go Local. One o'clock, Governor Mundo, 1.30, Dr. Fine will give you the most up-to-date coverage of everything that's going on on the virus. Uh, stay tuned, stay safe, please, please wear your mask.